I've been um, in sustainable finance now for some time, for actually more than 15 years, when nobody was talking about sustainable finance, or actually the, the field of sustainable finance actually didn't really exist. There were just some people that uh, did environmental finance, which nobody really understood. So I've seen a lot of the, of, of the growth, but I think we've seen now in the last years in particular is, is, is quite a shift. And I think the biggest shift at the moment is really that the bigger investors, such as pension funds about, or also the central banks, that they are really looking at this issue from, from two perspectives. From one is the risk aspect, um, to integrate climate risk into all of the operations. And the other one is to really incorporate environmental and social considerations in, 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 in all of the operations. And that is a major shift. Um, and I, what I would see now is that at the moment, particularly the environmental and social, it's probably really something more on the reporting side, but I, I do expect that also finance institutions will look much more into actively securing environmentally friendly projects and rather not only to see how they can demonstrate that uh, certain environment and social considerations are taken into account in their normal business. There are a few things to mention. I think on the one hand side, we have to really, really now build out the existing technologies we know that can help us to address the sustainability challenge. So from, from, from our perspective, it is really now when we look at uh, electricity generation, we are looking at, um, of course, at renewable energy, new forms of renewable energy. And, and as a bank, as a European uh, bank, um, we, are, we are really focused also on, on new technologies. So one example would be we are, we are supporting some floating offshore wind projects. That's a good example where a wind project, which is a very mature technology, is now taken, let's say, to the next level. So um, that's, that's one thing. Then if you look at another sector, if you look at transportation, then it becomes very clear that we have to, to, have to really change the way we, um, yeah, we, we uh, or what, what we use for, or how, how we actually transport things, in, including ourselves. So, um, and there we look really at the electrification. So that's a, an, another big thing. And if you then really think about it, it all comes down to how we actually produce our electricity. And there it's not only that we are supporting the, the type of electri electricity generation, but also now how we integrate all this new type of electricity in our energy mix. So this is a big focus area of, uh, of ours. And then on the other hand, we also have to look that is probably, at least at the moment, not enough. We, in order to really achieve the massive um, carbon emission reduction that, that we all want to achieve, we probably need new technologies. What we see in project is that one of the key aspects of capitalism is is, is really also to seek profit as an um, well um, as an incentive, and I think that's something that we can integrate even in extremely sustainable uh, projects, and that's something what we are doing. So, for example, um, we are we are talking here about the Global Landscape Forum, and we are talking. If you if you look at about landscape projects, we actually see that working with communities. Um, to, uh, to build business models around sustainable landscapes can really work. And we're supporting a few funds, for example, the Arthelia Climate Fund or the Land Degradation Neutrality Fund, that is really trying to work with local communities on the one hand side to preserve the landscape, but on the other hand to really find other forms of uh, economic activity. And I think that's very important. We cannot um, we, we have to realize that in order to preserve some of the landscapes, we have to offer economic opportunities f um, for, for the people that live there. And I think that's something where, where the current model can be, can be amended in order that it works. Well, sustainable land use, you, you already make, you, you mentioned the big word, and that is land. And, and, and usually that is, that is one of the, the key challenges. Um, Especially when, when, when we go outside of, of Europe, when you go to Africa, also Latin America, one of the key challenges is that uh, land ownership is not, not, not very clear. Um, and um, so engaging even in, in goodwill in a project always has the risk that, that someone else may claim that they own the land or that some people um, have to be displaced that, that actually live on this land. And that is one of, the, one of the key challenges actually of doing land projects, even if, if one wants to do the right thing. So this reputational aspect as an investor is, 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 is quite significant because sometimes it's extremely difficult to actually um, do the proper due diligence on, on, on all those aspects. Um, then in addition to that, uh, it depends a little bit where, where one does sustainable land projects um, from a pure financial perspective. Um, when we look at forestry, for example, it is actually um, it, it is it requires a really a long term horizon of investment, um, which only 
long-term oriented investors can, can really do. And that is a challenge for, for the entire finance community, in, in particular those that need a constant return on their money and cannot say, I'm now investing a sum of money and I'm only getting this back in 20, 30 years when the trees have actually grown. So those are, those are probably one of the key challenges for, for landscape projects. Let's take it from both ways. From governments, I think governments should really look how they can deploy the funds in, in, uh, in a more meaningful way. And I, I think they should look at two things. One is really impact, so that they really require um, a good reporting on the impacts and also really target certain impacts on the ground, on the one hand side, uh, but also that they increase the financial impact of that, so that they really go away from saying, okay, we're using our funds only as grants, but also to see, okay, can we actually use it in a way to attract other investors? And uh, we call this here at the ERB, the, the European Investment Bank, we call this uh, blended finance. Um, and it is something that, uh, um, that we, we believe will further increase and that allows us to, to develop financial instruments, mechanisms that then draw in other, in particular, private investors. On, uh, on the investment side, uh, on the uh, private investor side, um, I think it depends. I mean, we, we are already seeing significantly more interest in, um, in sustainability or sustainable finance per se. Um, but I think there we need to be firstly clear what that really means. Um, and my advice would be to really see to go just beyond um, environmental and social, um, let's say, reporting and really try to find real environmental products. What I do hope is that the new um, that the new sustainable finance framework in Europe and potentially also regulation would really help those companies to really move into this area.